of all the countries that have come into existence in the last century, no country's birth certificate is more legitimate than that of Israel. I mean, what other country has a whole bunch of lawyers with degrees talking about how it's legal and moral and they have the right to dump a country on top of another country and be killing the native people of that land for 70 years? One reason is that many of the men who founded the country, genocidal racist Theodore Herzl, who said in his diaries about the Palestinian Arabs on the 12th of June, 1895, spirit the penniless population across the frontier by denying it employment. Both the process of expropriation and the removal of the poor must be carried out discreetly and circumspectly. Legality. Zeb Jabotinsky, who said, We cannot give any compensation for Palestine, neither to the Palestinians nor to other Arabs. Therefore, a voluntary agreement is inconceivable. All colonization, even the most restricted, must continue in defiance of the will of the native population. Therefore, it can continue and develop only under the shield of force, which comprises an iron wall which the local population can never break through. This is our Arab policy. To formulate it in any other way would be hypocrisy. Legal. David Ben-Gurion, who said we must expel Arabs and take their places. Legal. Menachem Begin. Yitzhak Shamir, who said, that the Palestinians would be crushed like grasshoppers, heads smashed against boulders and walls. Very, very legal. Were either lawyers or had legal training. They were obsessed with making it legal. Unlike almost every other country, lawyers, not generals, were the midwives of Israel's birth. I guess you're forgetting the likes of the Haganah, the Ergen, the Stern Gang, different types of terrorist factions that killed anti-Zionist Jewish people, British people, and also other foreigners and Palestinian people alike. I guess you're also forgetting that 400,000 out of the 800,000 Palestinians ethnically cleansed from their land were ethnically cleansed from their land before the 1948 war. Or more accurately, rebirth, since it had existed as an independent country twice before in history, step by legal step. Again, this is another disingenuous lie. If we look at the real history, there was never a state called Israel, except if you look at biblical history. Um, and the state itself and the two states that he's got there, the Jewish states, were not in all of historical Palestine. They are in only part of the area. Israel moved legally toward nationhood from the Balfour Declaration in 1917 to the San Remo Agreement in 1920 to the League of Nations Resolution in 1922 to the Anglo-American Convention on Palestine in 1924, to the partition of land ordained by the United Nations in 1947. Which would be fine if any of these consulted the native Palestinians and the newly immigrated European Jews to the land. Into a nation state for the Jewish people and an Arab state. Yet immediately upon its lawful establishment in 1948 as the nation state of the Jewish people, Israel was illegally attacked by all the surrounding Arab states as well as by elements of the local Arab population. Again, this is completely disingenuous. Israel were never, ever under any military threat whatsoever, and its military capabilities outweighed every single one of the neighboring countries, including the Palestinians that attacked them. They were backed with Western weapons. He doesn't want to talk numbers with the partition plan in particular, because 55% of historical Palestinian land was handed to 33% of the newly immigrated population. So why would Palestinians not accept this? And also, he doesn't include that the Israeli side did not accept this either. In defending its right to exist during that war, Israel lost 1% of its population, including many civilians and Holocaust survivors. It also lost some of the land assigned to it by the United Nations. It captured other land from the aggressors that was originally assigned to the Arab state. Only Dershowitz can normalize that sort of a illegal land grab and just completely leave out the fact that 7,000 people from the Arab armies died, as well as 13,000 Palestinians. The end result of that war against Israel was an armistice line that prevailed until 1967, when Israel was once again attacked by Jordan. <laughs> Are you serious? Israel attacked Egypt. Such a scholar who writes a book called The Case for Israel, should be familiar with Operation Focus, surely! During Israel's war with Egypt and Syria.
Between 1948 and 1967, despite the armistice, Arab terrorists continued to infiltrate Israeli borders and to injure and kill Israeli citizens. That was part of an official policy by the surrounding governments and by leaders of local Palestinian groups. All of it was in violation, obvious violation of international law. Following the establishment of Israel, a transfer of populations occurred. Several hundred thousand Arabs who fled from Israel during the War of Independence were not allowed to return. Some had chosen to leave, assured by their Arab leaders that the fledgling country would not last a week. Others were forced to leave. At that time, approximately the same number of Jews were forced to leave Arab countries, another violation of international law. I wonder what changed. Why was it that in 1948, then the Jews started leaving all the Middle Eastern countries? He leaves out the fact that in Iraq and elsewhere, there were operations admitted by the Israeli government to have been carried out by Mossad and other terrorist agencies blowing up synagogues and killing innocent Jewish civilians to push them out of the land. This argument's always used, yet Israel was a European Zionist invention and the people that moved out of these Arab states and are now in the state of Israel are actually discriminated against in the law and are lower class citizens than the white European Jews. Where they had lived for thousands of years. The difference was that Arab countries kept the Arabs who left Israel in refugee camps, where many of them still live more than a half a century after leaving Israel. And Israel, on the other hand, fully integrated all the Jewish refugees from Arab countries into Israeli society, where many of their descendants now serve in the highest positions of Israeli life. Israel and Zionism is a Jewish state ideology. And in order for them to have enough Jews to make up a Jewish state, they needed to integrate these people into their society to have their Jewish only ethnic state. On the other hand, Palestinians were violently forced from their homelands, and most of them, no, did not choose to leave. And if they chose to leave, chose to leave because they were being attacked on the daily, harassed, and killed in mass numbers. Israel's establishment as the nation state of the Jewish people by entirely lawful means is quite remarkable for several reasons. First, there is no country in the world that is as surrounded by hostile enemies as is Israel. No, again, Israel has invaded every single one of its neighboring countries and talks about how it lives in a tough neighborhood. Two months ago, it practiced how it would invade South Lebanon, occupy South Lebanon, and destroy Lebanon. This year, Israeli ministers have admitted that Israel have launched over 100 strikes onto Syrian Arab army strategic military positions. They admit this. They have attacked every single one of their neighboring countries multiple times, killing tens of thousands of civilians in the process and still claim that somehow everybody else is the aggressor. And also, it works with the lights of Saudi Arabia. It's been that way since 1948. Yet Israel sought the way of the pen rather than of the sword. It has needed the sword to survive, but its preference has always been for the pen. That is for peaceful negotiations. It's peace treaty with Egypt in 1978. It's peaceful abandonment of Gaza in 2005. And it's many attempts to reach a peace agreement with the Palestinians. There were various treaties signed between Egypt and Israel, most of which Israel completely violated. At the time of this peace treaty, Israel illegally occupied the Sinai and didn't fully withdraw from it until the late 1980s. This point that he brings up also about withdrawing from Gaza, Yes, they did withdraw settlers from Gaza. Then they placed double the amount of settlers in the West Bank, and they paid the families to move into West Bank settlements and compensated every single settler family. And also, there was an open election then held. Hamas won equally, fairly. Israel did not like the decision that the people of Gaza made and illegally collectively punished the population, placing a siege which has lasted over 10 years against the civilian population of the Gaza Strip. It has not been peaceful whatsoever. There has been three major massacres that have happened since then. Our examples. Yet despite its entirely lawful origins, Israel is the only country in the world today whose origins, and therefore its very legitimacy, 
have been questioned. Finally, we are getting to international law and the United Nations, which you cannot deny dumps you on your head. Israel has violated more UN resolutions than any other nation state on the history of the planet combined. Now, you can talk about how there's anti-Israel bias, but the sheer amount that they have violated. And if we look and read into all of these resolutions and we look into what it's violating, it's violating some of the most basic human rights. And it is not doing things like withdrawing from the occupation of the West Bank and withdrawing from its illegal besiegement of Gaza. They say it's unfairly picked on, alluding to it's just anti-Semitism. But no, it's not anti-Semitism when people criticize you because you are massacring Palestinians and forcing a system of apartheid upon them. By the General Assembly of the United Nations, by numerous member nations, and by many organizations that claim the mantle of human rights and the rule of law. Ironically, current attacks on Israel's legitimacy have taken the form of lawfare, the use of international law as a weapon. Any fair tribunal that judged Israel by universal standards would reject such attacks out of hand. But alas, international courts like the UN itself have been packed by those bitterly antagonistic to the nation state of the Jewish people. The United Nations has 193 member states. Now, I love how in the animation you've made it so it looks like, uh, you know, the United Nations is owned by Arabs and Russians, but this is just not the case. The misnamed International Court of Justice refuses to acknowledge that Israel, a country that deals with terror attacks and the threats of terror attacks on a regular basis, has any special security needs. More Israelis die from peanut allergies than they do so-called terrorist attacks. Rather than argue statistics year to year, which we could do, and every single year more Palestinians have been killed on a significantly larger scale than Israelis. Let's just look at the last Gaza war in 2014, where six Israeli civilians were killed to 2,000 in Gaza. As I've demonstrated, this phenomenon, questioning the very right of Israel to exist as the nation state of the Jewish people, cannot be explained on legal grounds or on any other rational basis for that matter. So then, how can this worldwide attack on Israel alone be explained? in only one way. It is pure bigotry. And there's a word for this bigotry, anti-Semitism. If you have a better explanation for why the one country in the world whose right to exist is denied is also the one country that is the nation state of the Jewish people, I ask you, what is it? Oh, suddenly rationality. He's asked somebody to try and answer his question after he's already asserted his answer is the only correct one. No, it's not because of irrational bigotry against Jewish people, anti-Semitism. No, not at all. You are not a racist for opposing racism. Israel is a racist state. Why? Because it is the only state on the planet which is for one ethno-religious category, Jewish people only. There are more than two million Arab Israeli citizens and they are discriminated against in the law in Israel. There's a system of apartheid there, and it's a country dumped on top of another country. People do not hate and despise Israel and condemn Israel because they're Jewish. They condemn Israel because of the actions of the state. The same way people condemn Saudi Arabia for cutting people's heads off and robbing women of their rights.